Hi, this is Sean Manaher, your host of the Author Hangout. Uh, the Author Hangout is brought to you by uh, bookmarketingtools.com, which aims to equip authors with the right tools, education, and community to help you market your books better. And on today's episode, we have a very special guest, uh, a real privilege to have him on, on the show, Tim Grawl. He is uh, owner of outthink.com. Uh, he works with uh, best-selling authors like uh, Dan Pink, Hugh Howey, and he's worked with hundreds of authors over, over the last number of years. And uh, we're really privileged to have him. We're going to be talking about uh, his book uh, and uh, a lot about what's in his book, uh, Your First 1,000 Copies, and uh, appreciate having him here. Uh, Tim, uh, welcome to the Author Hangout. Thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and thank you. Uh, the, uh, the show, again, guys, is going to be talking about sell more books. And with that, um, in talking about selling more books, we're going to be covering four uh, areas that Tim covers in his books, and we'll get into that in just a second. Now, audience, uh, just the same as we do every week, uh, what, we're tracking your comments over on Twitter, over on uh, Google Plus here, uh, we, using the hashtag, the author hangout. And uh, with today's episode, I want to give you an upfront, uh, upfront uh, call to action. These are, there are three call to actions that I'm going to be talking about today. Number one, uh, sign up for Tim's email list. Number two, buy his book. Uh, I, I, took, I devoured this thing, and, and I don't know if you see all these tabs and whatever. I literally uh, go out and get more uh, post-it note tabs because I ran out with so many good ideas and, and thoughts in that book. And so, so buy the book. And the third one, we'll be talking about book marketing tools at the end. So, Tim, let's get into it. Um, first question that I would like to pose to you is uh, how can somebody predictably, and I, I'm not saying like, you know, that is this, and help us to understand how, how can somebody predictably sell more books? Well, so I feel like there's kind of three groups of people when it comes to authors, three groups of authors. There's those that um, write and uh, hope, uh, so they write a book and they kind of hope it'll sell. And then there's those that will write and buy. Those are people that, you know, they write the book and then they hire a publicist or they spend a lot on advertising or they do whatever they can to buy their sales. And then there's a group of people that write and know. They know before they pin the first word of their book that they have uh, people that are going to buy it. And that's what I think every author can have uh, nowadays is that direct connection to their audience. So that's how you create um, something where it will drive predictable book sales is if you have direct connection to your audience where you're able to communicate directly with them in a way that gets their attention and that and that drives action. And so actually yesterday somebody asked me to make like a prediction about the future of publishing and, I, and I'm steadfastly against making predictions because I'm always wrong. But, um, but mainly what I know is if I have direct connection to my fans um, if I can communicate directly with them, I'm going to be okay no matter what happens. So whether you know traditional publishing falls apart, or whether uh, there's no more Barnes and Noble, or whether something happens to Amazon, or all of a sudden they become evil to authors, you know whatever it is. If I'm directly connected to my audience and I can communicate with them, that allows me to. Um, predictably sell my books because they're going to be ready to buy the next thing. And so like my um, one of my clients, Pam Slim, came out with a book at the end of last year and she started writing at the beginning of the year and before she pinned the first word of that book, she already had an audience in place that was dying to buy it. Wow. Now I know that you can't get into details, details uh, with your clients, but what did that look like? I mean, did, did she start out with a, a website and, and talk to her friends and try to get interest that way? I mean, she, you're saying she didn't even write anything in the book, but she already had a mailing list? Yeah, so she, she already had, a, you know, I like to think of it as a, a platform. She had, you know, direct connection to her audience. And we do, um, we can, and I'm sure we'll talk about email lists. You know, email lists are kind of the main way to do that for a lot of reasons we can go into in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, you know, and she's not my only one. You know, like when we've done launches for Dan Pink, or we've done launches for Chip and Dan Heath, or um, or you know, even on a smaller scale. You know, when I launched my book, I only had a list of about eighteen hundred people, but with that small list, I was still able to drive a thousand sales in less than two weeks. And so, you know, having that direct connection to um, 
fans of your work allows you to know I'm going to be able to sell um, copies of my book. Of course, if I have a list of 50,000 people, I'm going to be able to sell more than a list of you know 2,000. But it's still predictable sales. You know, I um, when we worked on Chip and Dan Heath's last book, Decisive, it came out in April of last year, and I was having coffee in December, the December before, uh, with Dan, with Dan Heath, and he was like, "Well, how many books do you think uh, we can sell?" And I just asked him a few questions about the size of his email list. You know, what's the open rate? You know, what kind of connections does he have to people? Maybe a, a half dozen questions, and I guessed within 500 copies of how many we would wow. sell. And you're talking thousands and thousands of copies of that book sold. Wow! And so again, it, it becomes predictable. That's pretty cool. And and in your book, you talk about systems. And so one of the questions I want to ask is, why are systems important to successful authors? Well, first I want to define what a system is because a lot of times we get really nervous about systems. Like actually the first time my business coach told me I should start building systems into my business, I was like, come on, I'm not like a bureaucracy. At the time it was me and one employee. Like, you know, I don't want to create all these like systems that we have to jump through and then we're going to have like meetings with PowerPoint at some point, you know. And um, what he taught me was that systems allows you to do something um, a predictable way Way to get predictable results, and so the the best example I have is you know we all have keys, you know car keys, apartment keys, whatever you have, and most of us probably have like a spot in our house that we keep those keys. So like when I come in my front door, there's this little blue table with a little silver dish, and every time I come in the door, I set my keys on there. And assuming my children haven't run off with them, that's where you can always find the, my keys in my house. And so what that means is in the morning. Instead of running around looking for my keys, I grab my keys and I go to work so I can get something done. And so that's what systems allows you to do. You do something in a, the same way over and over and over to get predictable results so that it frees you up to do the actual creative work. Mm -hmm. um, so what I look at is any time that I can system systematize something, um, and there's a couple different ways you could do that, but a, a simple one is like a checklist. You know, so every time I put a blog post up, I put a new blog post up every week, I have a checklist that I go through to make sure like I update this, I have the header set up right, I've gotten it edited, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. You know, like there's about eight or nine things. So that way I don't have to try to remember what to do, I don't forget things, I don't, you know, only do it halfway. And I also don't have to worry about whether I'm going to remember how to do something. I've systematized it. I can do it over and over and get a predictable result. That's pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to pop up a couple of comments right here just to let you know that, uh, our the audience is really into this. So this is great, Allison says. Thanks for always bringing us informative and helpful guests. So that's really cool. Thanks for sharing that. And also uh, we have a comment from Allison, if I can bring that up. And she says, this is great. Thank well, it's the same comment. So I can't apparently do comment tracker, RJ. So I'm going to leave it back up to you. So um, let me get rid of that one. So when you talk about in your book, but what, let me back up. With the comments, guys, uh, any questions that you have, uh, Tim is here. We're, we're going to be answering the questions. And even after the show goes on, uh, we're going to answer the questions uh, where we can. And if we don't know the answer, we'll figure it out. But um, I tell you what, here's your first call to action. Uh, buy the book. Uh, and honestly, uh, RJ, pop up a, a link for people to buy the book. And this is not a sales. Tim didn't know I'm going to be, you know, trying to sell his book. But this seriously is a an awesome read. Uh, it took me, I don't know, less than five hours to read the entire book. But it is packed full of good information that I know our audience, you know, a Allison, and I know that Sally Sue, I know Sue Evan, each of you who are looking to market your book, buy the book. So with that, you talk about in your book permission and uh, why is permission such an important aspect to marketing books? Well, so permission gives you that direct access I was talking about and how I define permission is um, anything that gives you a way to communicate with your audience in a way that drives, that gets their attention and drives action. So um, one of the
don't get caught on the tools. A lot of times we like are like, okay, I should be on Twitter, or I should start a blog, or I should do this or that, and it's like, well, you're it, that's the exact equivalent of if I uh, went to Lowe's or a, a you know Home Depot or some department store and bought a bunch of tools and came home and said, I got tools, I can build a house now. I don't have a blueprint, but maybe if I just bang on some boards, something will fall out the other end. And so what you always have to do is start with a strategy first. Like, what's the plan? What's the blueprint? What am I actually trying to build? Then I can reach in my toolbox and grab the right thing. So I want any way that I can get direct connection to my fans so I can communicate with them in a way that gets their attention and drives action. So just because maybe I can send a message to them, if that doesn't actually get their attention or drive action, then that's not useful. That's not permission. And so what we look at is, um, you know, I'm a big data guy. So before I give advice, I try to go out and test. And really that's what I really enjoy doing with a lot of my clients is I get to test stuff on these huge scales you know people that have 250,000 Twitter followers like let's see what works and what doesn't and what I found is that um, social media pretty much any platform you can name uh, it's not permission because you can't reliably get somebody's attention or drive action the number one way is email and if you just think through that a little bit of like okay if you're on Twitter um, think through everybody you follow on Twitter. Then think through all of their updates in a 24-hour period. How many of those do you actually stop and read? You know, for most of us, it's probably one percentish or less. Um, where if you look at emails that come in your inbox, most of us check almost a hundred percent of our emails. And you know, no matter how much the productivity experts tell us, you know, to only check your email twice a day, most of us check it in real time as it comes in. And so um, that's where we see over and over. And I have lots of anecdotes about it, but um, sure. email is the number one thing that you should be doing because once you have somebody's access to somebody's inbox, you can reliably get their attention and drive action. And, and with that, I'm going to bring up a comment Sally brings up. Said, Lots of marketers now say email lists are not useful. So email is dead for e-sales. Too many emails, no one opens them. <laughs> What's your opinion on that? Um, my opinion is they haven't actually tested it. I would like to see what kind of campaigns they've run and what they've done. So I've actually, uh, when we launched uh, Dan Pink's last book, um, I ran a split test and that just means I, I promoted something through one channel and looked at the sales and then promoted something through another channel and looked at the sales to see which one drove sales. And at the time he had 200,000 Twitter followers and um, at the time he had about 50,000 email subscribers and what I found was somebody on an email list was 24 times more likely to buy a book than somebody on uh, that was following him on Twitter. Again, back to my my last thing. When you and you know, go out and test this yourself. You can use a tool like Bitly, bit.ly, and you can see how many people actually click links. So share some things on Twitter if you think that Twitter will work. And put the Bitly link in there, and trust me, you'll be very sad when you see how many people are actually clicking those links. Um, and so, where with email, it regularly drives action. And if you, you know, and the other thing is like, you just look around at people that are making money online, not people that are talking about internet marketing online, because most of them aren't actually making money. The people that are actually making money with internet marketing, they're doing it with email lists. Um, they, it is the most, um, it is the most reliable way to drive action online. And and again, my thing is to test it and see because what I see over and over when I test it, and I get again, this isn't just my list. I test it across all kinds of different authors. I've worked with over a hundred different authors, and I have never seen a time where social media came anywhere near the kind of um, the kind of results we can get through an email list. Okay, and, and Tim, so uh, when we talk about email lists, and, and a lot of our uh, audience, they're kind of, they get geeked out about numbers, and they're kind of a numbers guy like yourself, so that's, you're in good company. What are some of the, specifically for email, what are some of the key uh, indicators that people should be watching out for when they're looking at their emails? 
So the first one is just making sure you're converting people to your email list. So out of you know 100 people that come to your website, how many of those people are actually um, turning into email subscribers? And then once they're on the list, what I'm constantly looking for is engagement with the list. So it's pretty basic stuff. You know, if how many people are opening the email and then how many people are clicking the email. You know, when you ask somebody to go to a link, how many people actually click it? And constantly looking at those numbers and making sure that um, those are staying healthy. But what I've seen is, um, you know, if you focus on sending out really great content to your uh, email list and focus on being, you know, I like the, I like the phrase relentlessly helpful. You know, if you constantly look for ways to help them get what they want and to entertain them and to give them useful things and to give them um, things that are going to help them, your open rates and your click-through rates are going to stay uh, predictably high. Um, if you're constantly spamming your list, obviously that's not going to work over the long haul. So, um, so I've seen, you know, um, you know, just pay attention to the content you're putting out and pay attention to how people are engaging with that content and that'll give you um, a feeling of, you know, what, you know, if those numbers are staying steady or going up, you're in the right direction. And so, so you know, Tim, the questions are flooding in here, and so we can only keep uh, do a few on 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 the air, guys. But we will answer every question that you ask off the air and uh, after the uh, the comments, so or after the show. So, but uh, one of the questions Bill said, Bill asked, is where do you get email lists for your genre? Is are there tools that you should, or or how do you get people in your email list practically? So there's two. Um, so I'm. I'm assuming when, you know, not a lot of nonfiction people use the word genre, so I'm going to assume fiction, and, um, but it works kind of in either way. Uh, and a lot of, it's, it's interesting, it's a lot of people that, like, read my book or, or, you know, read my emails or stuff, they'll email me and they'll say, oh, well, this stuff is for nonfiction writers, it's not for fiction writers. And, and here's my, I've got the perfect response now, because I've, I've always said, no, this works for both. Um, but uh, a good friend of mine, we've become good friends because he found my book and we got connected and he's a guy named Michael Bunker and he writes Amish science fiction and he uses everything I've talked about to make his books bestsellers and now he's making, he's a very, becoming even more successful of an author um, and writing full time now and so if it works for Amish science fiction, <laughs> it will literally work for anything. Um, so email list. So the first place you want to do is make sure you're using your book to drive people back to your email list. So make sure the last page of the book and hopefully even sprinkled throughout, you're inviting people to join your email list. And I did that in my book. There's four or five places where I invite you back to the website. Um, the other thing is the best way to build your platform is to introduce yourself to existing platforms. And this is where I'd like to see even more of this, of authors working together. Um, a lot of times when authors get started, they try to kind of shoot for that A-list, like they want the mm -hmm. biggest sites and the biggest authors covering their work. And that's really hard because everybody's trying to get those people's attention. But what I found is if you look for the authors that are maybe a B or C list author, you know, they're, they're doing well, they're selling books, but they're not like a household name in the industry, you know, anything like that. You know, what I found is they're really open to working with authors and helping other authors. And so they're willing to let you write something for their blog or do a webinar together or do something where they introduce their fans to you. And what that does is that builds a camaraderie over the long haul. And I do this with a lot of other authors and people as well, is I just look for ways that I can help people and look for ways that I can get introduced to their platform. This is what I'm doing right now, right? And mm -hmm. so, um, so those are the ways that I look to build lists. And then I have a really strong call to action that I do, um, that I have. So for me, I have a free 30-day course at my website. You can just go and sign up at outthinkgroup.com, and I'll send you a free 30-day course talking about a bunch of this stuff. And I make sure that I mention that wherever I go as a strong, like, hey, you know, come join my email list and be a part of what I'm doing. And it's basically just saying, hey, if you like this stuff, I want to give you some more great stuff. Just sign up for my email list, and it works really, really well. 
Yep, and, and with that, so here's your second call to action, guys. Uh, <laughs> go sign up for his email list. And seriously, I'm on his email list. I can vouch for the quality and the, the, the practical nature in which he provides. So I know everybody that's in this audience right now, you're looking for practical, helpful things that are going to be uh, something that everybody can use immediately. And so that's where you need to get on his list. So uh, RJ, uh, why don't you find a, a link for, for folks to sign up for his list. And in the book that uh, you have, uh, your first 1,000 copies, uh, you talk about content. Uh, so Lisa, uh, Talisa has a great question here. How do you send helpful content if you're writing fiction? So um, here's what I look at. There's this really great quote that I probably now use it more than he does um, from a guy named Hugh McLeod. He was one of the first authors I ever worked with. And um, when in the kind of early days of blogging when people were like, well, what do I write about? What do I write about? He had this really great thing he said. He said, treat it like an adventure, an adventure worth sharing. And what I've learned is authors are interesting people. You know, these are not people that are like working a nine to five at some crap job and then coming home and watching NASCAR all weekend. You know, like, you know, Authors are interesting people. You're doing interesting things. You're constantly learning new things. You're obviously writing new things. Um, even if you never leave your house, you're going places in your mind that you know most people never get to. And what I've learned is if you look at what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and you look for interest, things that you find interesting, um, other books you find interesting, authors uh, you find interesting, stories that you've loved, um, writing tips that you're learning, and you just use your platform to share these things, to share your adventure as a writer, that is interesting content. That's stuff that people are going to connect with you on and it gives you a constantly evolving um, a, amount of things to write about. You know, for me, I actually have a running list of blog post ideas, and most of those blog post ideas just come from people asking me questions. So, like, I'll talk to an author, and they'll ask me a question. I'll think, well, you know, if they're interested, somebody else is interested in that as well, so I put it on my list. And I just kind of keep a running, you know, I look at what I'm doing on a daily basis, things that I'm learning, things I'm struggling with. I did a post a couple weeks ago about dealing with criticism because I, you know, I had some weird criticism coming in about my work. And I thought, you know, this is stuff that everybody deals with. And if they're not dealing with it, they're afraid that it's coming. And so I wrote a post about dealing with criticism. So again, my adventure is something I'm learning. I'm sharing it with my audience. It wasn't even book marketing related. Um, and you mentioned him earlier, and the guy that probably does this the best is Hugh Howey. Like if you go through his, just go and like look through all his blog posts, it's a constant stream of things he's thinking about, things he's learning, stuff that's happening in the industry that he's interested in. It's his adventure and he's sharing it with his audience. So that's where I look for when it comes for content for my platform, whether it's emails or blogs or podcasts or whatever it is. Yeah, and, and I have to, uh, again, attest to Hugh Howey's stuff. I love it. I mean, he is uh, one of the most interesting authors uh, that, that, that I've come across, and his stuff is genuine. He's genuine. Uh, he's very approachable, and that adventure, that idea, come alongside, here's my adventure, he, he typifies that, that idea. Um, in your book, you talk about outreach. Uh, two questions, one uh, that I have, what, do you, what are you doing specifically uh, to do outreach that other authors just are not doing. So the you know I define outreach as doing anything from moving people from not knowing you exist to knowing you exist. You know that is the first thing you have to do because if you have the perfect email list, the perfect website, the perfect blog post, or whatever it is, and nobody knows you exist, it doesn't matter. So, um, so I'm constantly looking for ways to move new people from not knowing I exist to knowing I exist. And so this is what's been interesting for me. So with all the work I've done with clients, I've, there's been two main areas I've focused. Um, book launches, and they're usually big ones because it, you know, it costs a lot to have me do a book launch, so it's only worth it if it's big. Mm -hmm. And then it's helping authors kind of get their platform off the ground. But I've never really done that like 
slogging it out for my book sales. You know, I've never like had to go through that really long period where, you know, my book's not just naturally selling, so I actually have to go out and generate some things. Um, and that's where on um, in my email list and stuff, I'm doing the 10K experiment where you can kind of follow along as I try to sell 10,000 of my book, 10,000 copies of my book in the first year. Um, because it's kind of like, okay, this is hard. You know, when your book comes out, like you start, you maybe sell a bunch and then it's like this steep drop off over the next few months of sales. So, how do you do stuff that sustains it? So, a couple things that I've learned in this process, talking with other authors, you know, really trying to learn this part of it. Um, the first is make it a priority. Um, my goal is to do two things every week to promote my book. Um, it doesn't really matter what those two things are. Maybe I'll pitch somebody to have me guest post, or you know, I do like a Google Hangout, like I'm doing now, mm -hmm. or I do a podcast interview, like I did last night, you know, um, or I reach out to some new authors that I think maybe we could do something together. But I know that if I do just two things every week, you add that up for a year. That's what 104 things. So I've now done 104 things to promote my book, and that's about 100 more things than most authors do. And so what, you stack those up long enough, even if half of them never go anywhere, I still have a great group of things that have gotten me out there. And so that's the first thing, is to really decide, like, okay, I'm an author. Part of my job is promoting my work. So part of my job every week is going to be to do at least two things to try to promote my book. Half of those will probably fail, but that's okay. I know if I do that long enough, I'm going to be successful. You know, um, I read the book, um, Scott Adams' new book, How to Fail Big and Still Win or something like that. And he talks about like how systems are way more important than goals. And so, you know, if you do something the same way long enough, you're going to get a certain kind of result. So I know if I promote something week in and week out long enough, I'm going to sell it. Um, and then what to do is that's where I'm just constantly looking for new areas that I think, okay, where are people congregating that might be interested in what I have to say? Um, so then I look at... Um, Authors, uh, like I've done some stuff with Jeff Goins, you know, who um, has some really great content. If you don't, if, if anybody listening doesn't know him, definitely look him up. Um, and it, he has a lot of writers that are um, that are attracted to what he does. So we've done some stuff together. Um, I look at podcasts, you know, that I can be on, and um, and then I look at um, you know different um, other authors or different blogs that I think I could write something for and I really try to broaden so like I've been on several entrepreneur podcasts well that's not book related but I'm an entrepreneur so I can get on there and talk about what I do and a certain percentage of those people are going to be interested in, in my book and so I'm just constantly looking for ways to move people from not knowing I exist to knowing I exist and um, looking for podcasts Looks like Tim's uh, video is cutting out there, uh, his audio. So uh, let me uh, let me say, everybody, the questions that you have coming through still uh, are are really good. I, there's a, at least a lineup of eight, of eight questions, and I'm gonna I'm gonna feed these questions to Tim. One of the things that I wanted to ask him: uh, What have you learned from uh, his experiment? That is basically he's showing his first ten thousand books. Uh, or trying to sell first 10,000 books, and he's giving a play-by-play. -play. This is what's working, this is what's not working. He actually tracks on his uh, website how many uh, books that he's sold within the last period of time, and, it, and it's you can see it, so it's very wide open, very uh, visible and transparent, so everybody knows if he's going to be able to sell this many books. And so, with that said, our calls to action for the day are... Uh, making sure that you number one sign up for Tim's email list. Uh, so RJ, put a, put that link up for, for folks to again sign up for uh, Tim's uh, mailing list there. Number two, buy his book. Uh, again, I spent a good uh, good number of hours going through this, uh, going through the tabs, uh, and and really almost every other page, I found something that was worth 
uh, sharing with you guys. And, and this is for you guys. You know, if, if you're looking for a book that is going to really help you to move ahead in your book marketing and what you're trying to do, uh, make sure you get the book. Uh, Tim, are you, you still there or did we uh, lose you? No, I'm back now. Okay. I don't know what happened. No problem there. We, we actually filled in the gap a little bit, uh, answered 100 questions. I just played Tim Grawl, and, you know, we flew by the seat of our pants, and we answered all the questions. No. Uh, <laughs> seriously, though, uh, there's a number of questions that if you have some time after the show or sometime today to answer the questions, we got questions from Christy, Jeff, Brian, Lisa, uh, and Robin asked a couple good questions. We can't hit them right now, but, Tim, as we wrap it up, uh, I, I told people to go sign up for your list. RJ's posting that. Uh, the other one is to buy your book. Anything else that you want people to know about you and, and share? No, I mean, that's it. My goal, you know, is to just help authors understand all of this uh, crazy marketing stuff and how it all actually works. And so um, that's what I'm here to help with. So any way I can help. Um, the main way I do that is the email list. Um, and so I would sign up for that. I send something new out every week, and then of course the book, um, as as Sean is, is you know nobody though Sean has um, tabbed their book as much as you have. <laughs> that was impressive. Well, it it was a great book. So I mean, I I uh, initially didn't start out like that, but I was like, man, I gotta I gotta get all this stuff down so that I can remember it. Tim, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, really, really appreciate it. And audience, thanks for all your participation. It's been really good. The last call to action as we leave every show with is uh, go to bookmarketingtools.com slash blog on the left-hand side. You'll find, or the right, whichever way I'm pointing for you, you're going to see a sign-up form for the Ultimate Author Checklist. It gets you a, a free marketing checklist. also enrolls you in our weekly book marketing uh, tips. And that's for you guys. It's going to help you. It's going to move you along the, the train and the path for you to market and sell more books. So thank you, everybody. We'll see you at the next episode of The Author Hangout. Take care. Bye-bye.